All right, now here we're going to talk about pyrimidine synthesis, and this is fairly straightforward. It's not quite as complex as the purine synthesis pathway, which, as we know, is not only purine synthesis, but also purine degradation and purine salvage. Now, I do recommend watching those two videos before you watch this one, because we're going to kind of build off of that one a little bit. So please go back and watch that if you haven't already. All right, so let's go ahead and start out uh, with uh, our py pyrimidine synthesis pathway. And our very first step is that we take two ATP, we take CO2, and we take glutamine, and we convert, convert it to carbamoyl phosphate. Now, where have you heard that name before? Remember the urea cycle? Indeed, carbamoyl phosphate is part of the urea cycle. However, in the urea cycle, we're using a completely different enzyme. So the, the enzyme that we use in the pyrimidine synthesis pathway, where we're taking ATP, CO2, and glutamine, this is called CPS2, carbamoyl phosphate synthase 2. In the urea cycle, we're taking different products. We're actually taking ATP, CO2, and NH3, ammonia. We're using an enzyme called CPS1, and we're making carbamoyl phosphate. Now, this is a totally different enzyme. You can be deficient in CPS1 and not be deficient in CPS2, and vice versa. But they are two different enzymes. They have different sets of uh, reactants, but they even though they have the same product. All right, so don't get confused there. CPS1 and CPS2 are different. Okay, so we have carbamoyl phosphate. What do we turn that into? We turn that into, through multiple steps, something called dihydroorotate. All right, not important that you know the steps along that pathway. Then we take dihydroorotate and we convert it to erotic acid. You may also hear it referred to as orotate, but I like to call it erotic acid because there is a disease here that uses that name. Now, the enzyme that takes dihydroorotate and converts it to erotic acid is called dihydroorotate dehydrogenase, D-H-O-D-H. Now, erotic acid will then get converted to UMP through a couple steps using a complex of enzymes called UMP synthase, and that enzyme is going to come back into play in a little bit. So UMP is kind of the, uh, you might think of it as the equivalent of IMP in purines. It's kind of the grandfather of uh, the pyrimidines. UMP, though, can be used because it is uracil. Uh, it, it can be used in, uh, in RNA because, remember, RNA does, in fact, use uracil. UMP gets converted into one of two things. It can get converted to UTP, which then gets converted to CTP. And it can also get converted to DUMP through ribonucleotide reductase. And that then gets converted to DTMP. Now remember that DTMP is important because that is part of uh, DNA. Now we don't really have any use for TMP, uh, because TMP would be used in RNA, but as you know, we don't have thymine in RNA. So this step from DUMP to DTMP uses an enzyme called thymidylate synthase. And this is an important enzyme as we're going to come back, uh, but this uses a cofactor and that cofactor is tetrahydrofolate. All right, so let's look into where some of these implications are at. So first of all, DHODH, dihydroorotate dehydrogenase. This can be blocked by a class of drugs, and these drugs are called teriflunamide. I'm sorry for my handwriting there. And leflunamide. And these drugs are used in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic arthritis. So it blocks this DHODH enzyme. The next, we have a disease called erotic aciduria. Uh, 
Now, erotic aciduria is a congenital autosomal recessive deficiency of UMP synthase. So naturally, what's going to build up? Erotic acid is going to build up. Now, how does this present? Well, because you're not able to make pyrimidines, you're not able to make DNA properly or RNA for that matter. And so because you're not able to make DNA and RNA properly, you're going to have a megaloblastic anemia, just as if you had a folate deficiency or a B12 deficiency. However, if you give folate or you give B12, the patient's not going to respond because the problem is not a folate or B12 deficiency, it's an enzyme deficiency. Uh, so what you have here is a child with a megaloblastic anemia and you give vitamin B12 or folate and it's refractory. So refractory to B12 and folate. And if you were to check their urine, you would see an elevated erotic acid in the urine. Okay, so that's how that shows up. So if you have a child patient who is uh, has a megaloblastic anemia, uh, then you'll want to consider that. Of course, you always want to consider nutritional issues, but this is a way that you can get a biochemistry question on the exam. So always consider that in your differential for megaloblastic anemia. Next, thymidylate synthase. What blocks that enzyme? Indirectly, a way that you can block this enzyme is through methotrexate. Now, why would you block that enzyme by methotrexate? Well, because you're reducing the amount of tetrahydrofolate. And if you decrease the amount of tetrahydrofolate, thymidylate synthase can't work. So methotrexate indirectly blocks that enzyme. And remember that methotrexate blocks the conversion of dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate. And do you remember the enzyme that does that? Dihydrofolate reductase. So uh, methotrexate directly blocks that enzyme. Now, another way that you can block thymidylate synthase more directly is through something called 5-fluorouracil. And this is given as an immunosuppressant and it's also given as a chemotherapeutic agent. So 5-fluorouracil will get converted in vivo to 5 fluoro dump And that itself will competitively inhibit thymidylate synthase by, uh, in, by competing with DUMP. And so that blocks thymidylate synthase. And so you can't make TMP or DTMP and thus you can't do DNA synthesis. And so that's gonna block the replication of cells at the S phase of mitosis. So that's it. Uh, that's what you need to know for pyrimidine synthesis. Um, again, I would recommend before, uh, if you haven't watched the purine synthesis videos, you should probably go back and do that. Now, uh, as far as converting ribonucleotides to deoxyribonucleotides, it's not super important to know this uh, pathway in a very detailed way, but do know that ribonucleotide reductase is responsible for taking AT ADP, GDP, CDP that we would use in uh, RNA and converting that into their deoxy forms, uh, the enzyme that does that is called ribonucleotide reductase. Now, one important place where this comes into play is that ribonucleotide reductase is inhibited by deoxy ATP. Now, remember back to when we talked about purine uh, synthesis and degradation, we talked about ADA deficiency and how ADA deficiency reduces uh, your conversion of adenosine to inosine. Now, if you have a reduction of that conversion, you're going to have adenosine building up. And adenosine will find its way to becoming DATP. And so what happens then is if you have adenosine building up, you have DATP building up, which will then inhibit ribonucleotide reductase, and thus you will not be able to do DNA synthesis properly and so you will have uh, a decrease in white blood cell count. And that's ultimately uh, what causes the severe combined immunodeficiency 
in, uh, in, in ADA deficiency.